Hello everybody, my name is Mike Lavoie with Voyage Comics, and if you're watching, we are now live on Facebook. We're going to be streaming a Lunch and Learn, unless you already ate lunch, then we're just going to learn. But I'm going to take you through my mind and what things I do when I am approaching a comic book page, what I think uh, it takes to make a successful comic book page, and um, contribute to conveying the story. So if you're not aware, we're launching the, the Kickstarter for Finian and the Seven Mountains 4 right now. And as of the end of day one, we're almost a third of the way pledged towards our goal, which is awesome. We also have the Kickstarter projects we love badge, which they only give away to special projects. So for all those who have supported, uh, we thank you very much. And if you, if you haven't... Um, Yet, now there's still plenty of time left to do that to, to get us across the finish line. So, um, this is how I always start a page. Um, I have a blank white rectangle in front of me, and I somehow got to make sense of it. And so, um, the, the possibilities are, limit, are uh, literally limitless. Um, so, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the script. And I'm going to um, try and get a good understanding of what the script is telling me. Um, so this one, page four, I'm going to paraphrase some of this, but basically it says panel one. All four of them are going to be looking, and they're seeing uh, Sacred D. San Miguel, hopefully I'm not mispronouncing that, I probably am, on top of the peak. Um, and there's a rock trail leading up to it. Uh, the trail uh, eventually goes through the, the, the portal of the dead to get to the, the church. Um, Pierre, at this point, has a line. So if you recall, I want to make sure that when I'm doing a page that is consist consistent with the, uh, the page that I just ended with. So this is, we'll go down here and we'll look at um, the page where it ends. Pierre says, hey, lovebirds, enough of the talking. Look at what is ahead of us. And uh, Finian asks, what is it, Pierre? And so that's what I'm, what I'm leaving off with. So um, now Pierre says, uh, we're here at last, um, and he talks about the church, the solitary church in the middle of the sea of mountains. And so there's a few things that go through my head when I'm thinking about how to start this. Again, um, literally just have nothing to, to start with except those, those words in the script. And so, um... I want you to first to understand how comic book pages work in that every comic book page is kind of like a little story within the story. Um, and every two-page spread has a, a uh, reveal and a setup. So when you turn the page, it'll reveal something that, that left you hanging from the page before that. And then at the end of the, the second page of the spread, it'll set up uh, something. So you want to turn the page to see what happens next. So the last, uh, the last setup was Pierre saying, hey, look what's ahead of us. And then you want to turn the page to see what's ahead. So now I'm asking myself, um, this first panel, what is the star of this panel? You know, what, what's the focal point is a term that, that you, you hear in art a lot. And you might say, well, it's Pierre because he's, he's the one talking. Um, and then, and then Marilyn has a line after that. She says, I've never seen anything like it. And then Brendan says something. So who is the star of this panel? That's the first thing I ask myself. Because I want to be able to draw attention to the star or the focal point with all of the tools I have at my disposal. And so um, the answer is the church is the star of this of this panel. And so I'm going to try and frame this in a way that that makes the church the center uh, focal point. It doesn't mean it's necessarily center in the panel, but in this case, I think it's going to be. Because what I want to do is I want to, I'm going to make this a big panel. And uh, I'm just doing some really, really, this, this stage is just a really, really rough layout. I'm not really worried about details. I'm not even really worried that it looks good, really. I just want to put elements in places and see just how it, how it fits and how it works, because I want to be able to do this quickly, because I might test out three or four different layouts before I settle on one. You know, so for this example, I want the church to be the main part of this 
page. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to frame the church uh, by, you know, putting um, an over-the-shoulder shot of fitting here. And then maybe you'll see a little bit of marrowing right there. Um, and I'm trying to also recall how everybody was standing and how they were all formed together in this group. Because I'm, now I'm going to be turning directions in my mind's eye. I'm going to be uh, shifting the camera angle, if you will, uh, from this position to a different position behind Finian's shoulder. And so um, Pierre is going to be over here somewhere, and Brennan's going to be there somewhere. So then we have uh, you know, some steps that are leading, winding over to this church, and there's going to be mountains behind that as well. And so that's just my really, really rough idea at this point. And so then I'm going to move on to the next uh, panel. And the next panel says, close up of Brendan talking gravely. Uh, Brendan warns him they should be careful. I don't want to be too much away. I'm going to try and paraphrase as much as I can. And so initially what I thought was I'm going to, I'm going to create a vertical um, layout on this one, a vertical aspect ratio. And the, and the crazy awesome thing about comic books is unlike a different medium like film, you're not stuck with uh, a single aspect ratio. To, uh, to create the art work in. I, I can do any single aspect ratio I want to. I can, I can do a diagonal. I can even create um, unique shapes with the panels. But this was my idea originally was I was going to have this. I was going to have uh, Brendan, his face, and holding the map here. And my thought is, is that I want to use some psychology here because he's warning them of the possible dangers of this this uh, location, I want to use uh, um, some art psychology, so you'll see this a lot in like Alfred Hitchcock films or something, but I want to use a worm's eye view looking up at Brendan, and this uh, creates a feeling of inferiority for the viewer, it just makes you feel like something's not right, a lot of times like Hitchcock will use that if, if um, he's showing the, the view of a victim in, in you know, about to, something bad about to happen to them. <laughs> Um, so this is what I'm going to do for this one, but um, I could have approached it a completely different way. Um, there, like I said, I could have uh, could have had an over-the-shoulder shot of Brendan looking back, or um, you know, I could have had a bird's eye view looking down on him. But um, this is the the way that made the most sense to me uh, in in uh, what it's trying to say in the story, and so that's the way I went with. And then when I got to the third panel. I had a problem because the third panel um, has all of them in the scene again. And it says a close-up of Brendan talking gravely. I'm sorry, that's panel two. Over the shoulder shot of Brendan. And um, all the other uh, people in the group are kind of gathering their things. And Brendan says, grab what you need. Um, I don't know what we'll encounter. There's more about that, but I uh, don't want to give too much away. So... Um, this aspect ratio that I have, this vertical aspect ratio that I have left over, does not work well, in my opinion, for that scene that I was trying to trying to get. And so, what I did instead was um, I changed it, and I went with something more like this. And I I went with a really extreme close up now of Brendan. I just kind of got like his his upper face with the map kind of covering his lower face. And just a little bit of his hand here on the edge holding the map. And again, he's looking, he's looking up, we're looking up at him, uh, gives us that psychology that, you know, something, something dangerous lies ahead. And then this gives you a lot more horizontal room to, to show um, the, I believe it was over the shot of Brendan. I think I changed that a little bit from the script, which is, uh, you know, not uncommon if I feel like something will work a little bit better. Um, you know, Phil does a really great job of giving me a description of, of the scene. And um, sometimes as the artist, I have to develop that a little bit more. And so I had, uh, again, Brendan kind of looking backwards, edge of the cliff, Merwin and Finian over here, and Pierre back there behind him. And then I also want to have Pika kind of flying away. So everybody's getting ready to move at this point. And so um, this is what my actual rough uh, looks like. I'm going to make that a little bit more. And... Um, this is a little bit more developed than the previous one I showed you. 
but it's still extremely rough. I'm not really concerned that much at all about, again, um, placement of the features, you know, how accurate everything is, even if the characters, you know, look like themselves or anything like that. I'm just trying to get a good feel for how this, how this scene is working. Okay, so um, I'm liking it. You know, I'm, I'm thinking uh, this is working for me. I have the the, uh, the path here that directs your eye and uh, up to, if it leads this way, goes up and goes through the portal of the dead and up to the church. So you've got this, this line that, that um, uh, leads your eye through the scene. And then the church itself is kind of framed between... Um, all of the characters and this little rock formation here. Um, so that's good. I like that. And then again, on panel two, I like uh, this scene of looking up at of uh, Brendan, the grave expression on his face. And the third panel I like as well. Um, however, at this point, it's still really rough. And when I go to my next stage, um, well, before I get to that point, I want I want to talk about a few other things that I have to take into consideration here is um, first of all the margins of the page. So some of the edges of the page are going to get cut off. So I want to make sure that when I do my final, I have enough room on the edges that nothing that I feel is important is going to get cut off. Um, that, that area is called the, uh, the bleed. And then um, I also want to keep in mind that the letterer is going to have to add uh, the dialogue into this scene. And so I want to make sure there's areas available for that person to do that where it's not going to be covering up the, the really important part. So, um, you know, you might have uh, Pierre's line might fall up here. The letter will make this decision, but I want to make sure that I have space available for him, you know, for him to work. And then um, Marilyn maybe somewhere over here, or maybe, um, maybe it's down here. And then, um, I can't remember, I think Brennan had one more line, so maybe that falls down here. I'm not sure, but the letter will make that decision. And uh, my job is to make sure I leave enough space in the proper places for them to do that. Um, so when I move to the next the next step, which is I'm going to start refining the layout. I'm not going to be again too concerned with um, details or anything like that. But I'm trying to I'm trying to refine the characters a bit and refine the layout. And so I'm going to put that one up next. And it looks something like this. There's a couple things I did in this, this refined layout. One, I moved Brendan a little bit down. And um, let me go back so you can compare the two. So Brendan and, uh, is a little bit down, and Pierre and Brendan are also moved a little bit off screen a little bit more. Pierre is kind of leaning into the screen a little bit more. I changed the path up a little bit so it winds up a little bit more. Um, let me see what else if I... Uh, I changed uh, I changed Pierre's pose in the final panel, so I'm just kind of refining how I want this to turn out. And this is kind of the sketch I'm going to go with, um, and then I'm going to start from there. I'm going to start defining more of the features and um, just developing this sketch more. So I'm adding things like stones and bushes and um, windows and um, clothing and you know different different uh, features. I'm getting more detailed with the features of faces and hands and things like that. Um, but still, uh, you know, this whole process from going to rough to a final sketch is really just a process of finding the line that I want to be the final line. So I'm kind of sketching nice and loose. And as I sketch and I continue to sketch over that, I'm going to sketch more refined and, and uh, really make decisions about where I want those lines to fall. Let's see here. So then my final um, final step of the sketch again is just gonna be really refining those lines and I'm really gonna commit now to um, what lines I want to ink. And um, I don't have to get too crazy with, um, um, because of the way that my process works, um, I, I digitally ink over it and so I'm I'm not only the penciler but I'm the inker. Uh, a lot of comic book production, you'll have the penciler will be one person. He'll sketch it all out, and then he'll pass it on to another person that inks the page. And so the penciler will have to 
make sure everything is very clear before they pass it on to the inker so because they don't want their pencil artwork to get messed up. For me, I'm the pencil and the inker so I can I can take a little bit more of a loose approach because I know that I'm going to be the one inking it. And so I'm going to be making those final decisions when I when I go to ink. And so when I go to ink something, a lot of times I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. I'm going to get a different uh, size pen and increase my opacity. So a lot of times I'll start um, with the eyes of the character, and I'm not exactly sure why I think it's because the eyes really hold so much emotion in uh, in the character's expression it just seems like a good place to start for me although um, there'll be times when I'll start I mean I'll start other places but um, for the most part this just seems like a logical place to start maybe the, the place that I'm most drawn to so when I'm inking um, I want to make sure that I'm not, at least this is this is my style anyway, other, other inkers have different styles, but I like to leave little um, you know, spaces between lines and let your, let your imagination kind of fill in those gaps in some of those places. I don't want all my lines necessarily to be connected, and I'll show you an example of this where I'm just going to make this invisible here. So in this eye, for example, there may, might be some areas where I don't connect the line where the line really should be. You know, I might, um, I'm gonna leave some of those spaces open and just let your imagination take over. And it just kind of depends on the specific picture, how much I do that. Um, but just, just one thing I like to do. So again, I have a lot of lines here in my sketch and I'm not going to use necessarily all these lines. I'm going to determine, um, you know, what lines I really want to see inked in the final. You know, I don't necessarily want this whole huge line under his eye. And so I'm going to work around the picture just doing this for the whole page. I did all this pre beforehand because um, this whole entire process from start to finish will typically take me about a full day's work. And so I figured we could do it like the uh, the cooking shows where we have everything pre-prepared and just kind of move from step to step so you don't have to sit here for eight hours with me going through this whole thing. But um, as I'm doing this and, and during the sketching process too, a couple things I'm going to be doing is... Um, uh, you know, really before each step, I'm going to just be doing a critique of it and making sure I don't see anything that I just don't like or something that stands out as being wrong. Um, one thing I can do is I can flip the canvas, and flipping the canvas is a great way to see if, um, you know, something jumps out at you that just seems wrong. Sometimes your eyes get used to seeing something a certain way, and then when you move it, uh, a different way and look at it a different way it just gives you a fresh set of eyes and, and things pop out at you that wouldn't necessarily pop out at you if I just kept the canvas uh, the right way the whole time. So again I'm just at this point I'm working with the pencils I'm inking over it I'm committing to lines there might be the great thing about working digitally as opposed to working with real ink and pen is one I can move a lot faster because I know that I have uh, an undo button and if I make a mistake I can undo it with, with real ink you don't have that so you gotta take your time a little bit more so it speeds up the process um, it also gives me a, the ability to to really refine the, uh, the ink work at the end of it if I, if I uh, see something that just doesn't seem right you know, I might um, either go erase or add more ink or, you know, move it around a little bit. So, I'm not going to sit here and ink this entire thing for you, because again, this takes a very long time to do. But that is essentially the process of uh, how I approach a comic book page. Again, I'm going to go to our... Uh, 
bring you back here to our campaign. I'm going to ask you to take a look at it and uh, be part of making this successful. We got a lot of cool things going on with this one. We got um, a name cameo, so if you want to see your name in the comic book, we'll hide it in the comic book for you. Uh, that's one of the backing levels. And um, we also have a, a trade volume. We're going to be combining issues one through four, which will be um, the issues that we've done up to this point. And we did a new, uh, drew, uh, painted a new um, cover, uh, collector's uh, trade cover for the volume. So you'll get all of it in one. It'll be a nice, impressive, thick book to look at. And um, um, t-shirts. I believe there's a really great t-shirt of Pika in here. I'm not sure. It must be down here. Some, oh, here we go. Here's some of the rewards. Comic book, trade volume, t-shirt, a replica map. So some just, some just really fun things that we try to make this exciting. So thanks for watching. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you have any questions, throw them onto the the Facebook um, comments, and I can answer them in there. Thanks, everybody. Have a great.